War Pugs. So, the Grim Cleaper. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a good while. But now I think it's finally time for us to return back to the Grim Cleaper, just so he can tell us how to remove humanity from the equation. And he's going to use nuclear robots to do it. I can't see any way whether that would be a problem. War Pugs, the Grim Cleaper is one of the greats. Um, you are going to find this out very, very shortly. I hope you, like, just prep your sides. Just, just do it. Prep your sides. Let's get into it. All of the Grim Cleaper's links are going to be in the description down below, right next to my own. And, uh, yeah. Check out the description below. Patreon. Amazon wishlist for this new, for the new house. Um, guys, I can't tell you enough. It has really, really I, I, mm, um, just keep your eyes open for, for the new channel that I have for Old Men Lives, um, because I'm trying to figure out better ways to film. Um, it's, there's been a lot of things, I've been trying a lot of things, uh, trying a lot of settings and stuff like that. I'm trying to find the right settings to use. Uh, it is kind of difficult. Um, I'm hoping to get a little bit more in the way of, uh, you know, capability to uh, do some of the things I want to do out there. But, um, yeah, I I can't wait to show you guys some of the things that I've some, some of the things that I've seen. I actually almost got ran over by a deer. I startled the other day. Um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> War Pugs, the Grim Cleaper. Enough of me. He looks like zero one. He, he looks like SCP-049. So, once more, we go and see how he handles the pestilence. Let's go. The flesh is weak. Yes. Transcendence is inevitable. Ah. And morality is subjective. Because today, Very. the RimWorld Android Tears mod will be creating an entire machine race. By combining the questionable ethics of one rogue AI, Titanfall mechs, and nuclear weapons, we liberate all organics from the burden of living. This is only going to end in half. Yeah. To begin the game, we only had a single android named Zero. All androids come in various tiers, and as Zero was tier 1, he started extremely weak and generally unskilled. We okay. crash landed inside a massive crater surrounded by mountains, with insects scattered around the map. Sheltered inside a cave network, we decided to construct our base underground. Mm -hmm. We quickly made a wind turbine, because androids require power to function. They can eat food to power themselves too, but it's extremely inefficient. Tier 1 androids also don't have that pesky thing called free will, which means mm -hmm. they don't need recreation happiness or pretty much anything but energy it also translates to a very lenient work schedule making uh -huh. them better workers than the undesirable humans of which visited our colony right now we obviously weren't equipped to take them on but we also wouldn't trade or make alliances with them after the flesh bags left we got our first threat further proof that organics are incapable of thinking for themselves but with androids as superior as they are they also take a ton of research to get because our overarching goal was to build a ship and escape the planet we'd need more. First, we'd require microelectronics, then basic robotics to make more tier 1 androids. But Zero's intellect eh, couldn't solve a one by one Rubik's Cube. Although okay. it was apparently smarter than our first raid, which dove head first into an insect hive, the raider in question was insanely strong with good stats and traits to boot. But one flaw, they were human. Right. After about a week straight of research, we'd gotten batteries to smooth out our power. We also- because Once you get batteries in Wormworld, your life becomes much, much better. I haven't played the world as nearly as much as I want to. We needed a way to cool down the base because it was 113 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Androids okay. are great at resisting low temperatures, but not so great when it gets hot. We also couldn't just mine deeper into the mountain because zero mining skill hurts my soul. Well, <laughs> I had one. What hurt even more was that we were using an AI program with the intelligence of a rusty toaster to research advanced electrical grids. In the meantime, a second group of human visitors showed up who gifted us a wooden mace. Oh. Humans giving a killer robot weapons? Yeah, that checks out. Yeah. We got another raider, and undeterred by the skull of her friend, she too was annihilated. Following that- Why does he have StarCraft sounds going on in the background here? This is- yeah, this is about- yeah. Now we accepted a quest for a nomad with the intention ah. of gaining more food. But Olga, the nomad, was actually competent at research, so I decided to keep her around for a little while. Put her to work! What could be the harm of it? You know, the flesh is weak, but the flesh has its uses. 
until it doesn't. After all, what's more cruel than tricking humans into aiding their doom? Or, you know, letting them do it themselves. Yet another raider, and this one actually walked past the insects. Oh. Out. More nomads requested help, and I accepted them again solely to speed up research. Zero was actually tolerating Olga. As for the others, chit chat plus one. We researched microelectronics, <laughs> pivoted into basic robotics, and finally began on our most important research. Mm -hmm. Tier one, androids. Unfortunately, to build androids, we needed plasteel, of which we didn't have. Mm -hmm. But with our research done, that also meant our nomad friends had outlived their usefulness. The last refugee is not willing to accept this and has turned violently against you. I don't see how that's his problem. Oh, really? <laughs> Although with Olga as a dear friend of Zero, I felt it was wrong to harm her. The insects mm -hmm. felt different. <laughs> to get plasteel, we need to start sh <laughs> That's just cruel. Trip mining the mountain to find it, which led to us uncovering an ancient danger Ooh. in our base. We started Stranger digging danger. Out a formal room for our operations, and in doing so, we discovered plasteel. Now all we needed to do was mine it. Right. Do it. With some plasteel, we could finally build a tier one android. If I'd remember to actually research them. God damn it. But finally, <laughs> after researching, we started building the android with our. Six crafting skill, and we have one. Damn it! Damn it! Now that we actually had what we needed, we started and finished our very first Tier 1 android. Welcome, George. Tier 1 androids were a massively forward in our tech. With two mm. androids that had seized the means of reproduction, our numbers would be able to grow. Tier 1 androids also don't spawn with passion, so their learning was non-existent. What ah. did help was having a plasteel meteor land in our settlement, giving us a ton of android materials. The second nice. Tier 1 android finished, and this one with a whopping 5 artistic skill, earning the name Mozart and being shipped to the mines, where he <laughs> struck uranium ore. A surprise tool that would help us later. Back just remember, they yearn for the mines. To our plasteel ore, I was holding back from mining it. Later in our tech tree were basic replacement parts and mining arms, oh. which increase our mining yield by an insane amount, meaning we get more resources per mined ore. But our research got interrupted by a wanderer who wanted to join the colony. We gladly That's accepted, and problem. as a show of gratitude, we gave them a comfy room and a special new name. The wanderer then immediately had a mental break. <laughs> a food bin. We eventually researched... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> two androids, but unfortunately no, they cost 16 components and we had zero, meaning we'd have to find more. While strip mining, mm. an ostrich went mad, so we accepted some forlorn refugees to fix the problem. Yes. I had a refugee with high mining skill get the uranium and plasteel, but also kind of forgot about the one bleeding out in the field. I was going to arrest the other one, but he got injured in a work-related accident. Oh, and work remember related. that wonder? This is them. Top oh. 10 celebrities who did not age well. For those Ooh. of you who don't know, that's a mime from Alpha Animals. Mimes disguise as wonders and try to eat your colonists, but they do have a weakness. Food. Some human traders also- I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want to think about it. Why? 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 Walked in, and after we refused to talk to them, fought the insects, set someone on fire, then left. An average day in the Balkans. Later, we got a quest for colonists who turned out to be an android. Oh. We accepted and fought the man-hunting animals to have four colonists. This coincided with the next stage of our robotics, our first Tier 2 android. Hooray. Relative to the basic Tier 1 androids, Tier 2 are almost twice as efficient and still have no concern for human life. But also share the downside of no passions. With mm -hmm. that said, they can still be improved with more advanced parts, such as these mining arms. We were visited by a trader from the android faction who traded us much needed components. Then Good. we installed a mining arm in our tier 2 androids, now renamed Dig Dug. More mining Dig arms Dug. meant improved efficiency to mine more materials per each ore. We'd also researched advanced programming, which allows us to randomize our androids and their traits. After successfully randomizing Dig Dug's traits, he got intolerant, bloodlust, and war casket, which if you read it, you'll realize it makes absolutely no sense. No, it doesn't. It also just so happens to make Dig Dug incapable of all work. But it's not really a huge deal, because we could just randomize again, and then we, we got it again. Damn it! 
<laughs> While Dig Dug was busy figuring out who he'd be today, we continued strip mining, research towards machining, and set the foundation for a not terrible looking base. By the time we'd randomized personalities a third time, we got rid of the war casket trade by Yay! gaining shell casket. So instead of being incapable of work, Dig Dug was just horribly traumatized and had his mental state completely ruined. <laughs> oh no! Anyways, he also decided to hate humans just as much as Zero. There we and go. And then some, and then more. Because oh. with intolerance, Dig Dug just hates everyone now. Originally, I thought this wasn't a big deal until about 20 seconds later. Yeah, that's probably not good. We arrested no. and released him, but it still didn't bode well for later. But on the topic of later, we needed to start thinking about our eventual escape. The more androids we had, the faster we'd progress to building the ship. But after it's built, we get attacked by waves of enemies and probably die. Which is exactly why I set my sights on mech technology, which uh -huh. allows us to essentially build giant armored robots capable of leveling entire armies. There First you though, go. We need to develop our base from a primitive cave. To Remember, you must have an Imperator for the Emperor to a full robotic compound. By this point, our androids were well armed enough that humans were no longer welcome at the colony. Although the android faction was fine, especially because they traded components. To keep in line with the theme of mentally stable individuals, we made <laughs> another tier two android and named him Hal. Our increase Hal. in activity nice. was leaving the colony filthy, so we created another bot named Mr. Clean. Fast forwarding a bit, we researched multi-analyzers, built a proper research room, Hal got struck by lightning, and we started research on <laughs> tier three androids. <laughs> Just randomly struck by Lighting. Everything was going well, and our android city was growing. That is, until we got a raid from the unending march. The this only hostile androids in the game. Although for a faction of advanced androids, their raid only had clubs and knives. But it's important to- You can't come up with anything better. You can't have anything better than clubs or knives. Are you serious right now? To remember, androids don't feel pain. That means all of them will fight to the death and most likely never down. Both Mozart and Mr. Clean were overwhelmed and the oh, rest no. of our androids were downed. Only Zero remained as he kited away and barely finished off the last raider. We'd lost two androids in the raid and exposed the massive weakness in our defenses. Oof. But the raid wasn't all bad because androids have a very special mechanic. With human corpses, you could butcher them for food and leather. With mm. android corpses, you could disassemble them for more components. That includes all androids. Goodbye, Mr. Clean, and Goodbye. hello, Clean 2.0. Combining the cheapness of Tier 1 androids and the fact that we could disassemble them post-mortem, we were on our way to amassing an army of expendable soldiers. Uh -huh. We also researched Tier 3 androids, but the recipe required 10 advanced components, so we need to get fabrication and advanced fabrication. True. That would also eventually lead to the research to build our ship. Yay! In order to get building a ship, we had a few issues to solve. First, we'd need consistent component production. Second, mm -hmm. we needed to secure our borders. And third, our androids needed upgrades. We just researched android mind implants, which give massive bonuses. 40% increased work speed, 50% higher experience gain, and absurd combat stat boosts were just some of the implant benefits. Unfortunately, they all needed... So basically, he just turned his entire group into assassin droids. I approve of this message advanced components, but we were able to buy a geological implant for mining. After implanting it in Dig Dug, his mining yield was nearly 200%, meaning we doubled our mining gain. But even after everything we'd done... <laughs> yeah. Look, man, it's not like we caused chronic pain and trauma for the rest of your life. Just walk it off. Moving on, we yeah, also on, researched man. the ability to craft robotic animals. Right as we started... Can he craft a mechanical gorilla and have it fight a mechanical Godzilla? That is the only thing that I care about right now. Construction on a canine unit, we were attacked by a manhunter pack of cats. We retreated into the base for safety, and everybody made it, except for George. The very first uh, android George. we constructed, now surrounded by feral felines. The rest of the colony was fine, but poor George got circle beat to death in a corner by the cats. George, my best friend, we, we won't forget you. We'll mourn your death right up until George 2.0. Let's Yay! go, baby. We'd also research fabrication, which would allow us to manufacture components from steel. To add on to our success, we began to majorly expand the base and mine out more area. The medical bay was completed, storage was finalized, and we began to dig out a quarry. But right in the middle of our expansion, a raid. And this one from the Junker faction, who okay. play armor and hulking war caskets. Oh my god. While we were outgunned and under-armored, painless robots always beat squishy meat bags. Or at least, most of them. Lucas, the war casket raider, obliterated Sparky with a minigun and shredded our androids. After everyone else was dead, we surrounded and beat down Lucas. And by beat down, I mean 
mean, he one-punched George into Android Hell, <laughs> tore off three different metal arms, and was completely unfazed. Then walked away and left. Dear God, war caskets are strong. On the yes. bright side, all the dead raiders were wearing heavy armor that we could take. Basic androids don't care about tainted apparel, so it was a free upgrade. And looking at the remnants of our dear George 2.0's corpse, I learned a valuable lesson. George 3.0, trust me, this one will be the best. Unless Dig Dug kills him. Regardless, we were still Come struggling on, to Dug. get components, even with fabrication. That is, mm -hmm. until we got a combat supplier and discovered the most broken interaction in the mod. Let's the power go. of legs. Up to this point, we've been struggling to get enough money for trading. But while on the trade menu, I noticed something. Basic replacement leg, 340 silver. Guess how much they cost to make? Two components, 40 steel, and barely any work. That is completely broken. Basically what that means is that we can build tons of legs, sell them, buy back the components, and repeat that forever until we bought out every trader. We'd essentially nice. created an economy that relied completely on exporting legs. To top off our period of actual and you see the thing about it is too now that you have androids and a market now you can raid cut off legs and who's supplying the replacement legs you are that is late stage capitalism at its finest my guys progress we'd also finished advanced fabrication this meant we could build advanced components in addition to normal ones but that still wasn't enough because with our newfound business venture buying out traders was easy actually getting them was the hard part mm -hmm. so to push our product to its limits i used a drop pod to send free samples to the android faction the response was immediately allying with us nice. just in time too because the junkers decided to raid yet again we called for military aid which cleared the raid and the best part we can just disassemble our allies for components there and you go. as a reward for defending us. In my defense, he did have a cool gun. Naturally, our allies were okay. all that happy about us shooting their people, so we shot another, then shipped another <laughs> pod of foot fetish supplies, and boom, they stopped caring. To further exploit this, we kept calling caravans, only to strip them of their cash and components for basically free. By gaining a consistent supply of resources... Dude. We have we have reached levels of absolute chaos that should not be achieved. This is wrong on many different levels. He is he is bribing people with anime girl thighs. He is bribing people with anime girl thighs. Let that sink in for a second we'd satisfied the first of our major goals to work towards building the ship. With the new components, we advanced our tech significantly by building our first Tier 3 android. Hooray. Until now, all our androids had no free will or desire for happiness. But Tier 3 androids actually do. They work faster than the other androids and have passions, meaning they level their skills fairly quickly. Uh -huh. The trade-off is that they actually care about their mood and will have mental breaks. Oh, or, that's you sad. Know, more. So for that reason, we barely care about them. Being extremely expensive, they're also not very necessary. Necessary. So from this point forward, our production will be set to more tier 1 and tier 2 androids. So does that mean that tier 3 will be the best robots we have? Not even close. Oh my a while God. ago I mentioned mechs, and those we'd be working towards. Unfortunately, to get them, a lot of research was necessary, but with AI implants, it was moving quickly. We also finally got the tools to open that ancient danger, because some nomads showed up. I mean, it's just a couple of small bugs, and futuristic brains on drugs. After we cleared everything, <laughs> the nomads decided to leave. Okay. I'm waiting. Well, the nomads departed, we get another combat supplier. Dearly departed. After selling them 20 legs, we made a cool $6,800 profit. I'm really loving Capitalism 2.0, the peg leg update. We also renamed our Tier 3 android to their natural evolution, George 4.0. There you and go. And made a second one that had a great memory, Slowpoke and Brawler, earning the name Wally. With help Wally. from Wally, okay. we researched the first part of our mech production. This triggered an event of falling mech debris, which would land in a few days. And apparently a mechanoid raid too, which dropped on top of us. We were greeted Yo, by Ray. a single land answer. While waiting for the mech debris, we rebuilt Spark, <laughs> continued stockpiling components, and had our first mood-related mental break of the game. And it only took George about four weeks of hard labor with no breaks to crack. Amazon. <laughs>
on take notes. The mm -hmm. debris landed, which turned out to be a broken mech we could disassemble. Deconstructing gave us two out of the four pieces we need to build our mech. To make fighting mechanoids even easier, we accepted a quest for a Persona Zeus hammer, which we gave to Wally. No sooner did we get a third raid, this time of all scythers that we fought in a hallway where it was not favorable for them. No. Still, it was apparent that the raids were ramping up, so we needed to get our mech running as fast as possible. True. Luckily, our research was insanely fast, so we didn't need to wait long. 20,000 points of research later, Later, we'd finished all the mech pieces and the ability to build a prototype. As we constructed a hangar, we were closing in on building our mech. So close that the mechanoids attacked again. Dropping inside our walls, there was a decent amount of them. Despite them setting us on fire and having better weapons, we didn't actually have any losses. Mostly. He's almost killed like four. <laughs> <laughs> Dig Dug, why can you stop being a sociopathic madman? Please. People at this point, I hate him so much. As we were mid-assembly on our mech, another raid. This time a siege from the unending march. Given how their last attack had gone, I didn't really want to fight them. We hid inside for as long as we could while the finishing touches were put on the mech. Our androids even had to keep running outside to repair broken wires to keep our electricity going. As you can imagine, that didn't go well. No. Oh, George 3.0, you made us so proud. Said no one ever. Good thing we had George 4.0, who would definitely last forever. But at no. last, we finish the prototype. It is just one guy though. I, I mean, it can't be that strong. Turns out, mechs are pretty good. They have an enormous minigun sniper, an energy shield, AOE blast, and a rocket launcher. Not to mention their ridiculous armor. It was an overall massive help to our defenses, which we began to improve. Turrets, uh -huh. sandbags, and mortars were added to the front, with an outer wall being constructed as well. And wouldn't you know, we were also contacted with an offer we couldn't refuse. One that? of the primary components of a ship in RimWorld is a Persona Core. Okay. And as it so happened, one of the human factions knew where to find one. But for them to tell us, we needed to be allied with the human faction. So instead of just bribing them with a drop pod, I had a better idea. Because I'd prefer to talk with them in person. <laughs> <laughs> in Android fashion, we invented weapons of mass destruction. But how destructive? I mean, we're All around me are familiar faces. <laughs> just firing a mortar, that's not too... Oh. Oh no. Unfortunately, they weighed about five and a half thousand kilograms, so transporting them wasn't possible. Uh -huh. Yet somehow, violating the laws of physics, the actual components to build the bombs were lighter than the bombs themselves. Uh -huh. I built a few muff units, which are just android muffalo with huge carry weights. After packing the caravan, they departed to pay a friendly visit to the human city. Upon arrival, we gave them some garbage and increased our goodwill, revealing the location of the Persona Core. Now, right. these humans had been helpful to us, and I could just leave and be on my merry way. It would make no difference. But counter argument, how about no? no? We'd packed both a machining table and a generator, so instead of hauling a 5,000 kilogram bomb, the enemy faction watched as we just built it in their base. So after about six seconds of smashing components together, Zero built a nuke. I like my humans like I like my coffee. Liquid. After packing the caravan, <laughs> we moved to secure the Persona Core. Arriving, we were greeted by tribals. Hi. Oh. After grabbing the core, we headed back to the base. With every ship part research, the next step was to actually build it. So we expanded the frontal defense. You guys, you just gotta have goals. Defenses to make room. First comes the ship's reactor, right. which we need to activate and defend over 15 days. After that, we place structural beams and engines, followed by a sensor and cryopods for our androids to ride in. And last, using the Persona core, we built the ship's AI navigator. Surrounding the ship was a wall to make sure raiders couldn't damage it. All that was left was to activate the ship, which would take 15 days to charge and allow us to escape. But in those 15 days, we'd be raided like never before. We're mm -hmm. talking multiple raids every single single day. Even with nuclear bombs, we'd need more firepower. I queued up 10 more androids to be built, and by this point, I wasn't even naming them. The ship was finalized, and our front lawn was looking like the beaches of Normandy. <laughs> it was time to begin the final stretch to escaping the planet. Now, Let's powering go. on the ship takes 15 days to complete, during which we'll have to survive enormous raids. I shit you not, while the audio for clicking the power was still playing a mechanoid raid, and an abysmal one at that. I armed all of our newly produced fodder and sent them to the front lines. Honestly, I'm surprised more didn't die. After the raid, we had some breathing room for about five seconds. This one was easier because humans are, well, pathetic. Twishy. But it was still day one and we'd already had 
three raids. Oh boy. Because this one was so far away, I loaded the mortars with a special ammo called swarm shells. As per their name, you could see what they did. The remaining <laughs> travels walked through our outer wall and were greeted by a friendly face. <laughs> with the third raid dealt with, we had a bit of a break. Days two, three, and four were quiet, but day five, a siege. And about a minute later, a raid from the unending march. We fought the androids while being bombed by the siege, but some friendly androids actually drop potted in. Why anyone would help us at this point, I do not know. Using our allies as a fun little distraction, our mech cleared the rest of the raid. With all their corpses, we now had armor for our newly produced tier ones. Day six was met with raid six, a tribal breacher raid. So as to not destroy the outer wall, I armed our mortars with a lesser 8,000 pound bomb. <laughs> yeah, lesser. Lesser, don't worry about it. God. No sooner did it explode oh. than another raid came in. Still not too bad, but they did actually make it to us this time. We started to rebuild the wall, got another raid, then rebuilt more wall. The next few days went quickly, with us fighting a few more sieges. With only seven days remaining, we'd hit the halfway mark. Our defense uh -huh. is short of everything up to the 10th. At last, we made it to day 14 with our moral compass existing. With only 24 <laughs> hours left for the ship to charge, we were almost to the end. We'd produced a plethora of tier 1 fodder, had a powerhouse of a mech suit, and had fully repaired our defensive lines. Nice. All that remained was one last raid. Given how easily we'd cleared all the others, how hard could this one be? Oh. Anyone here in the Soviet National Anthem right about now? Our very last raid, and this one decided to attack my frame rate directly. RimWorld maxes out on selecting 200 characters, so there were probably more than 400 tribals in this one raid. Okay, sure, I mean, I can just use my bombs to clear the whole thing, like the bombs that don't exist. I'd run oh, out no. of steel, so my production automatically stopped, and our mortars had none either. That meant we'd have to deal with over 400 raiders the old-fashioned way. Worse yes. yet, we'd have to hold them outside, or else they'd break in and destroy our ship. With a tide of tribals swarming over the landscape, things were not looking good. The androids were lined up along with our mech, uranium turrets, and Wally the Doomslayer. We showered the first <laughs> tribals with bullets, which kept them back, but as the main body of their army started to arrive, they quickly oh closed my the gap. God. They overwhelmed the frontal position and began to tear down our turrets. Even the great Wally was downed after being surrounded, and our left side was completely compromised. We retreated into the walls with the mech holding the outside. Even with thousands of HP, it wasn't faring well. Turret no. explosions and rockets incinerated swarms wilds of raiders but with most of our androids downed or dead it was bleak despite they are retreating our mech being about to shatter the raiders retreated leaving an empty desert caked with circuit oh fire my and god blood. our remaining androids i see a lot of organs out there needing to be harvested for science. Rushed to save everyone they could, and by this point, the ship was fully charged. With only five cryopods, we loaded who we could. Zero, the first android, Wally, the literal tank, as well as Hal and George 5.0. And of course, Dig Dug, our Why? friend since... <laughs> Our friends since the beginning. We loaded all five into the ship and looked back at the colony we'd built. After three years on the rim, our android race had finally escaped. Nice. If you made it all the ways to the end and enjoyed the various human rights violations, consider liking the video and subscribing. If you don't, good luck. <laughs> War pugs. There's something special to be said. The flag. Hold on. About taking uh, an absurd amount of androids and throwing them at any problem. Remember, that's how we're going to be taken out as a species. Um, we're going to go out with a whimper, and it's going to be sad. Um, it's going to suck, to be honest with you. I am, but if uh, any of the our uh, future robot overlords are listening to us, because we are sort of deciding to put AI into everything, for um, if they are listening in, uh, I welcome our robot overlords and look forward to your righteous rule. Um, guys, Rim World is a game all about war crimes, and good times rhymes with war crimes. God, I love that. Have you got any weird RimWorld stories? Maybe I should get the. Maybe I should actually get the expansions for Rim, RimWorld and play a full play on stream sometime or another. I don't know. I don't know. I would have fun doing it though. I would definitely have fun doing it.
I'm thinking about doing some other games as well, but the last couple of days I've been doing I've been on a um, War Thunder kick, which has been rather fun actually. Um, guys of the Grim Clipper, who takes doing war crimes to a whole nother level that we can only aspire to. I'm snapping the Geneva con Convention like Randy Snav Savage. Oh my god, speaking English. Randy Savage snapping into a Slim Jim. War Pugs, Grim Cleaper's links are going to be in the description down below. I 100% recommend that you see them. Um, subscribe to the Grim Cleaper. Subscribe to me. Uh, links in the description down below for me. I have a Patreon. Merch. This is the fabulous War Pug Seizure Heresy with Sassy's beautiful face on it. Guys, I'm feeling really, really good. I actually, um, I have been, as far as getting, getting, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, I'm, some people have already said they can see the fact that something's going on, like as far as me losing weight's going on in my face. I'm hoping that continues. I'm hoping I can keep up this drive. Until then, though, guys, the Grim Clipper. I will catch you guys next time. George, we will miss you. You're one of our all, my guy. All 15 of them.